Hey guys, it's B. Welcome to The Next Level. I'm so happy that you guys are here. It's my Thursday show, The Next Level, where I bring you next level guests, community members, projects, mods, things outside of the scope of arcades, which many of you know me for. And today I have an awesome guest. I'm going to bring him on in just a second, but to kind of prep why I did this show a little bit later, and I did a two-part episode. If you guys didn't catch it, yesterday, uh, Wednesday night, I did a part one of the show where I opened up this big beast right next to me. It's the Hasbro's HasLab War for Cybertron Unicron, and it's an absolute beast. All I did was put it on the stand, put the rings around it, and it's massive. You can see how big it is compared to my head, and I'm going to get to this a little bit later. So definitely would love to hear what you guys think about the Unicron toy. Um, but I had so much fun talking with Cool Toy, a.k.a. Douglas Smith, about his collection, and he and I definitely... Uh, have had more passion for for toy collections as we've had that growing up and I thought of a guest I was thinking of guests that I can really talk toy collections with and uh, I'm so fortunate to know uh, my guest that I bring in today Scott Zillner is an amazing uh, person who's in the toy industry that lives breeds toy collections is an expert in the field has been part of um, you know creating toys was on the netflix series to uh, the toys that made us uh, specifically the power rangers episode because he hosts uh, one of the largest power ranger conventions in the world power morphicon and so i'm going to bring him on in just a second but uh, if you guys haven't checked out yesterday's video check that out and bring all your questions today. Scott is amazing. He's a part of uh, a lot of different brands, but toywizards.com is the one that he's a part of uh, promoting his his toy brand. So let's bring on Scott, give him a warm welcome. Hey, Scott, how you doing, man? Hey, how are we? Good. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I appreciate your time. I know you and I have had some history uh, through some conventions that we used to go to, especially with our both love for Japanese robots. I know that's uh, one of the things we both have in common through Macross and Robotech, but you are uh, really well known, and I, I feel like personally, like in the toy industry and just being in that field. So can you just give folks a quick introduction to kind of you and, and your history in the toy industry and, and kind of what you do currently? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I've been working professionally in the toy industry for might be 17 or 18 years, like really wow. kind of depends on on what work you want to say, this is your professional work, and this is your amateur work. Mm -hmm. uh, amateur work for over 30 years, if you mm -hmm. want to go that way, like where I was a professional artist, but then uh, I kind of really count my professional work where I was painting toys for the industry as cool. we know it. I was nice. actually doing toy prototypes and hired by companies to do that kind of work. And I've been a painter and a designer in that field, you know, uh, well before I moved to LA. So it's it's about 18 years now. Awesome. And now that you've, you've, so you've been a part of the development process, but uh, you're collecting yourself, obviously. You also promote your own shows and conventions and fandom. Yeah. So like you do more than just, <laughs> you do almost a little bit of everything, right? I'm definitely a man of many hats. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a toy designer. I'm a toy mm -hmm. painter. I work in toy development, manufacturing. Then on the other side, I'm a very big toy comic uh media collector uh like you i collect arcade games yes um i collect cars i'm a big collector in every aspect of that fandom mm -hmm. and then um i'm also uh i run a toy news website called toy wizards with my partner mm -hmm. lauren stone mm -hmm. um i run multiple conventions power morphicon robo toy fest japan world heroes pasadena comic con and more. So I, I, I literally run 13 events in any given year. When we can have events, yes. I run 13 events in a calendar year on top of everything else. I, and you, when I hear about your schedule and all the events that you go to, it just absolutely amazes me. So you're one of the, the few folks that I know that are so involved with it. So in today's conversation really is just to get to know you a little bit more because I've, I've known you through, again, our mutual love of Macross Robotech because we do a convention together called, it used to be called Macross World Convention. Now it's Super Dimension Convention for folks if it, if it does come back later this year. It's it's my convention that I actually host. If, if folks that may be joining and watching, I'm not just an arcade guy. I'm, I'm a huge guy into toys mm -hmm. um 
But I know you do so much more. I know that you have such a passion for toy collecting in general. And so uh, yesterday, my guests and I were talking about, you know, the state of toy collecting, what it means to hunt, uh, you know, for that that valuable piece that you're looking at. And, you know, I feel like it's changed a lot over the last couple of years, especially even in the pandemic. Um, so I guess my first question for you as a personal toy collector, do you still go out and hunt for 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 things regularly? Is that part of your schedule that you do? You know, uh, some observations I've made of the collector world and the collector world pre-COVID and after COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, it has drastically changed for mm -hmm. COVID. Um, one thing that's been, people would buy toys at conventions. Well, the conventions are gone. Mm -hmm. People will then buy toys in stores or they pre-order them. Mm -hmm. But with COVID, no one's doing anything they're not going to concerts they're not going out to eat they're not going to chuck e cheese whatever they're not doing they're just at home and so that's exploded a range of a lot more online ordering mm -hmm. i don't know about you but i ordered a ton of toys in advance more so than i ever have before this last year you know ups is like dropping off stuff every day almost because I ordered, you know, every time something came up for pre-order, I'm like, yeah, I want that. I want this. <laughs> but it's really catching up with you. Um, on top of that, more people are becoming collectors. Mm -hmm. People that maybe bought one or two toys a year are now every trip to Walmart and Target, which are the two places that you're allowed to go to, mm -hmm. they buy toys. And so they've completely wiped out the toy sections at toy stores. Mm -hmm. And when that once they've started collecting toys again and they've wiped out the toys, they're like, well, there's no toys here. You know, effing scalpers bought them all. No, it's not really scalpers. I mean, certainly there are people out there. Flippers and resellers are buying and selling toys. Yeah. They always have. They always will. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more new collectors that are out there. Right. I'm suddenly going to buy He-Man. Well, He-Man didn't even exist a year ago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there. Right. It's only exis existed during COVID and everybody bought it. Yeah. Um, for us Transformer guys, it's been a banger year with War on Cybertron. That stuff has been fantastic. Yeah, the toy and quality of the newer toys is, is really good. Is really good. And then we have Kingdom, which gives us G1 Transformers and Beast Wars mm -hmm. and a whole new set of bone sores that like can come apart like Dino Riders. And you're like, you know, or you know, it's Bone Age. Yeah, Bone Age <laughs> and Dino Riders made by the same company. But Bone Age was dinosaurs that could come apart and you could build new dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. These new uh, Transformers are dinosaurs that can transform or you can take them apart and put them on other Transformers. And you're just like, this is never ending fun. This is, you know, <laughs> nothing I, I've ever thought of would be more fun than just taking stuff apart. And, and then I've got armor, bone armor on top of a Cybertronian transformer. It's great. I love, I love that you still like actively play with all the toys that you get and they're like, are really into like knowing the intricacies of it. Cause I think at some point, collecting is sometimes about nostalgia of just wanting it to have it and have it displayed and you know for me you can see i, I obviously did love to display my toys but how often do i get in there and actually like get in there and play I, I don't find myself that much but for you in terms of your fandoms this is this is like you know your passions and so how oft, like i guess my, one of my first questions in terms of what you most are drawn to do you have a ranking a pecking order of all the stuff that you collect or are you really into everything because i know there's so many things that you usually get yeah i i really love a lot of toys i mean mm -hmm. i really really do mm -hmm. um i'm not that single focused collector of like mm -hmm. i only collect gi joe's from 1982 to 1996 or you know or, or 86 whatever that might be I have a room for GI Joes, like an entire room of just GI Joes. Um, then I have an arcade room. That's an arcade, mm -hmm. you know, a room for arcade, a room that also has what I call the robot wall, a giant wall of robots and jumbo machinders. And jumbo machinders is collecting robots that you will never buy all of them. Mm -hmm. Because you can't. It's not possible. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. But it's not that there's so many, is that some of them are so rare and so few mm -hmm. that they're you know millions of dollars at a certain point you can't oh even goodness. buy them 
Wow. Um, and then I collect just, you know, random little stuff. Like, it just doesn't matter. I just love so many different things that I've never really hammered myself down to just one thing. I, I like collecting a wide variety of stuff, but mm -hmm. I do have my favorites, G.I. Joe, mm -hmm. Transformers, Shogun yep. Warriors, um, Superpowers, Tron. I'm a big Tron collector. You know, there's there are stuff that I do like, and there's stuff that I just like. I don't even know what that toy is, but it looks so cool. I'm going to pick it up, and I'll do that too. Well, I mean, but since you're so into running Power Morphicon too, like, is that another thing that is really high on your list, or is that just something that you just kind of you know really people taken often on? ask me like, oh, yeah. you must collect, have every Power Ranger toy ever made, and I'm like, no, but they <laughs> probably ran through my hands at one time or another. I do mm, have, you know, a cargo container full of Power Ranger stuff. Like yeah. it is that that yeah. big of a collection of stuff, but I run the convention, so I do need mm -hmm. a lot of stuff for it. Like, yeah, I've got sense. you know full on uh, Megazord store displays. I've got mm -hmm. you know uh, pow full pa size Power Rangers. I've got full size Power Ranger villain costumes. You know, of <laughs> monsters. Oh, like, that's you know, awesome. There's the, that I mean, stuff. It takes they, up a lot just... of space. Yeah, so space. I mean, are, are are do you have storage? Is this all in your place? Like, I mean, as a, as a never ending I, I, collector, I'm lucky to be living where I do have yeah. some space and okay. I have cargo containers. So I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I don't have 14 storage lockers all over mm -hmm. LA. Right, uh, right, everything's okay. stored on site now, which is good. That's awesome. And I, I think I remember seeing some pictures of some like life size collectibles that you might have. No, some I do. Some I mean, cars I've, uh, and things, or <laughs> I, I've got several life size things, and sometimes I take them to events, and sometimes they just stay here. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the wildest things I was at a toy show in San Jose, mm -hmm. and somebody had a full on, full sized porpoise mm. like an eight foot porpoise from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Like oh it was an old porpoise, and they got rid of it. This guy had it. He tried to sell it at the toy show and nobody would buy it because, you know, where are you going to put an eight foot porpoise? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he's like, oh, you're eyeing that porpoise. You want to take that home? I'm like, I do, but I'm, I just can't pay your price. What price did you want to pay? And I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to go home with the porpoise. And uh, <laughs> I did. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, I could do I could do this much for you. He's like sold. I'm like, oh, I could have gone lower. He really wanted to get rid of that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> the negotiations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in the closet of like one of my storage rooms, there's a, mm -hmm. you know, saran wrap, bubble wrapped porpoise just mm. sitting, you know, <laughs> standing in a corner, a life size porpoise because, you know, I couldn't say no at a convention. I, did, I, I have a confession to make. I literally just did the similar thing um, during an arcade auction. So there's something called Captions Auctions Warehouse that I've been eyeing. And this past weekend, there was a Star Wars race pod racer. Uh, oh, you got arcade. pod racer. Yeah, because it was it like I think I was casually listening and they were mentioning that the logic board wasn't working and it was like three hundred dollars and I was like, oh, I just bid four hundred dollars. Nobody will like it'll go for more than that. And I won it at four hundred dollars and I'm like, crap! I were really gonna put this thing and so <laughs> I absolutely feel I was like maybe I should have went lower, but um, I I probably would be doing some content later on about my uh my conversation with the wifey about <laughs> bringing home another giant arcade next to the virtual one that i still haven't really done much with but i, I know I'm you gonna, i'm gonna, gonna tell you if you need mm -hmm. to make room i've got a perfect <laughs> home for that virtual one which is oh, my yes. real arcade machine oh my goodness I mean, yeah mm -hmm. i already have tron and discs mm -hmm. of tron and then mm -hmm. tron cocktail so i've got oh goodness, those yeah. But one of the arcade machines that I want more than anything in the world is that virtual on double seater that you have. Oh, so cool. I was really fortunate getting it because I think it had come up, I think, twice during two different auctions last year. And the first time it came up, I didn't win it. It was like above my price range that I wanted to pay. And then the, the way that that auction goes, they have so many things. Sometimes it goes until 2 or 3 a.m. And I was bidding on it at 2 30 a.m our time just hoping that no everybody else is asleep <laughs> and, and then jumped that's on it and got it are, man yeah. that's where you mm -hmm. can finally win something if it's that's at the end of that are. auction and everyone else is mm -hmm. asleep 
yep. you can you can finally win it. Um, I'm glad I didn't see it. Otherwise, I would have bid against you. <laughs> I know, you I know? know. I'm glad I kept the secret. But if I see another one, I will definitely let you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it de- it's, it's on yeah. my list. It's definitely on my list. Yeah. And I, I did see a sit-down Road Blasters one time locally. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And I told them, hey, I want this. I want this. And they just gave it to another family member rather than selling it. And I still oh, I emailed see. them like every couple of months. Like, hey, I still want this. And they're just like, they won't even answer me anymore. Like, no, it's yeah. gone. So tell me about your arcade collection. So you do full-size uprights. You've got, like I saw, you said Tron, Disc of Tron. I think you said you had, did you have a centipede too? Or I got two centipedes actually. Um, okay. I really like centipede. I'm not very good at it. Um, that's mm-hmm. something I think a lot of people don't understand is like, you can buy a machine that you love, but not be an expert. Like not everyone's Billy Mitchell mm-hmm. on Pac-Man, um, or, right. you know, uh, Donkey Kong. Like sometimes you just buy a game because you like it. You know, it brings yeah. back that nostalgic memory of mm-hmm. dumping quarters in an arcade and losing as a kid. And now you can lose those same accords, uh, quarters to yourself as an adult, mm-hmm when you have an arcade um i gotta move a couple machines around in my main arcade i was gonna move azevius out because at Mm -hmm. this point um i need to do i need to recap the monitor so i need to pull it Mm -hmm. out i've got a pac-man that i want to tweak so i think i want to tweak the pac-man and put that in place of the zevius and then i can pull the zevius out for repair I have a working arcade in my house. And then in my workshop, I have a repair lot that I don't touch. So (laughs) there's a lot of machines in the, in the, in the, in the workshop, but in the house, my play machines, I've got discs of Tron assault, which is one of my other favorites as a kid. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, Um, the the tank game assault. Yeah. A tank with two controllers. Again, I love that two controller games. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Donkey Kong. I got a Star Wars. Um, I'm trying to go in order. Tron, then I have like Dissotron and then Tron. Xevious, which needs to be put out. Uh, then I have my old six in one. I got Raiden 2. Mm-hmm. And then Centipede. So that's like all of them I can fit on that one wall. That that's, wall is killed. That's way more than like I remember seeing pictures of, like just you naming them off. But um, <laughs> that's, I, you that's might a nice see pictures collection. pictures of an older house and then there's a newer okay. house where I could put a little, couple more arcade machines in. Got it. Cool. Um, All right. Then I'm, I have two pinball machines. I've got Flash Gordon and... Oh, cool. Uh, big Guns. Uh, 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 Williams 1986 Big Guns. I played that game at mm-hmm. Arcade Expo. And I'm like, this game is fun. And then a, a nice. one came up for sale locally. And I'm like, I've I've got the money because I'm I was doing WonderCon that weekend. I'm like, I've got an empty van. It's in Anaheim. And I just went there and picked it up in the night. And like nice. took it home. Like, oh, I've got a pinball machine now. You know, so pinball has been a big too. In the, in the in the arcade kind of three quarter scale home arcade market right now, virtual pinball is the big thing that that is now getting in the hands of more people because full size pinball machines they're expensive, they take a lot of maintenance. So they do. I, I've broken yeah. my big guns by just oh, no. yeah. uh, well, I didn't break it. It's just age. Uh-huh. Some of those plastic yeah. bits yeah. just get old and they break, yep. mm-hmm. and you got to be able to take it apart and fix it um that's just part of owning a pinball machine that's part or of it, exactly. owning an arcade machine in that matter mm-hmm. too you've got to do certain amount of maintenance they will break on you for no reason <laughs> and you got to get somebody over i've got a buddy locally that will help out and you know gotta you gotta recap monitors you gotta uh fix control sticks or buttons you know it's, mm-hmm. it takes a little bit of maintenance I'm I'm just dipping my toes into the real arcade hardware, but like Mike Dennis is saying, VPX rocks because virtual pinball. It's a hot topic because Arcade One Up, which is the three quarter scale arcades that I've been collecting the last year, mm-hmm. it's where my main audience looks at. Um, you know, that's they they've brought a home version of you know virtual pinball into your house for the casual person that that can't afford the really big pin machines. And so they, it's it's been really cool to see just the home arcade market really blow up during the pandemic as much as toys have, right? Just because it's, um, it's you want your entertainment mm-hmm. here in your house absolutely mm-hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really grown in the last year. It's what really I've been known for. In fact, you talk about twin stick arcades and and things. I I cr- I made my. I don't know if you ever saw it. I built a dedicated Macross arcade cabinet, theme cabinet with two dual joysticks, and then I, I play. I emulate pretty much all the dual stick games that like Assault and those things too. Uh-huh. Like I could play virtual on it too with that. But you know, there's something about having the real arcade hardware, which is super fun. But I definitely have enjoyed being able to relive games through emulation and and, and running PC mods. But sometimes uh, there's so much I've noticed there. when you have the 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 emulation, sometimes they run a little faster because you don't have the lag mm-hmm. that you would normally have on an older machine. Sometimes there's a little bit of lag there. So it is a different playing experience. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And emul- emulation is never perfect. If anybody ever asked me about like, oh, how come this isn't exactly how I remember things? Well, it's emulation, right? It's not going to be yeah. the exact hardware. It's going to be dependent on your PC or no, I, specs that you're running. I have um, a, yeah. a, one of, and then like I have got more machines in my workshop. I think I might have maybe 12 more machines in my workshop. Mm-hmm. And one of them is a, a centipede and a, and a Pac-Man. And I really love playing Pac-Man on the old Pac-Man. In fact, I have two Pac-Mans in my workshop. One doesn't work. One works, but needs fixing. Nice. And uh, Pac-Man is one of those machines that I just love going out and play. But again, I don't play it very well. I never gotten a, a, a kill screen. You know, I've never mm. gotten that far, but I'd love playing Pac-Man. You know, so yeah. it's just one of those things that you you get in love at a certain point and you go with it. Yeah, no, it takes dedication to get really good at arcades. And I can say I'm I'm more the casual player that loves the nostalgia side of things. Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely. Yeah. I am not a master player on any <laughs> game. Um, one of the things I like about Arcade Expo when they have it is that there is professional players there and there's amateur players like me. And the last Arcade Expo I went to, I had three top scores by the time they closed. Oh, wow. And I even beat one guy on Qbert Cubes. And it was literally, I was playing two games simultaneously. Like every time a player would die, I would just have the second player and going on. Trying to beat his Qbert Cubes score. And throughout the whole weekend, I would get a high score and then he would beat me. I would get a high score and then he would beat me. And... uh they're like, we're shutting down the place. Stop your games. And I'm like, no, I got to get this. Get out. I get in win. here. And yeah. I beat him. I got my high score in there. I got a picture of it. And then they shut the power down. I was like, whoa. I was so happy to get <laughs> Sounds like a high sign scores auction. on three different games while I was there. And That's that right. was that was a great feeling about going to an arcade. And that kind of experience when you're yeah. you know, there for three days playing games. So competitive much, Scott? No. <laughs> uh, a little bit, man. I was real <laughs> happy to beat him. I beat like two other guys on two other games. Um, one was War Planets, mm-hmm. uh, Cubert Cubes, and then there was a, a vertical shooter with three screens, and I was able to beat that guy too. So I got three high scores. Um, could not get a high score on Space Dungeon, and it clo- it broke before I could really work on that. And Zookeeper was just out of my mind. There's no way I could beat anybody on Zookeeper. Those guys are too good. <laughs> cool, cool, man. Some folks are in the chat are talking about their own tournaments, and so like the the home arcade market, and just you know playing connectedly, like you're saying. You have to find different ways to find competition, or if you're going to get to that level. So that, um, it makes that you push. Aspect, yeah. It pushes mm-hmm. you to 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 succeed. Yeah. You know, I can play that game and be like, okay, it's great. But when you're at an arcade and there's a high score there, and you have mm-hmm. an hour left, you got to beat that arcade or go home. You know. Yep. And I was able to beat that last guy on Cubert Cubes, and I uh, went home a victor. It was great. Very cool. Those memories, right? Those will just kind of <laughs> stick with you until they come up with the Qbert cab. And then does that mean you're going to get one too? Or? <laughs> oh, dude, I really love Qbert cubes. I've just never been able to find it. I only yeah. played at Arcade Expo. It's so rare. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's jump back to toys. So um, it, uh, I'm curious for just uh, the the tips that you may have for somebody who's looking to collect nowadays. Like if, if people were like trying to just be, you know, get into their, like, what, what do you have any nuggets of of wisdom for toy collectors these days you know, toy collectors you should just do what's fun 
you know, do what's fun for you. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't ever think like, I got to have every toy ever made, or I'm going to quit. Like I see a mm -hmm. lot of GI Joe collectors quitting. They're just mm -hmm. rage quitting right now. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I can't get everything. So I'm going to quit. And it's just like, dude, if this is going to make you quit over a year, this isn't the hobby for you, man. Like yeah. I, I hunt some figures or like we're talking about virtual on hunting that for 25 years now, you know, it's that old. It's like 20 years for, it was like 90 something. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's, you know, 25 years trying to get virtual on like, mm -hmm. and you finally got one. I still need one. <laughs> but I never quit trying to collect. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. get one. I'm just going to keep trying till I get one. And with toy collecting, you got to have that same mentality. You got to be easy going with it. Buy what you like. Spend your money wisely. Place your pre-orders where you can. Mm -hmm. Buy stuff when you see it. And when toy shows come out, go to the toy shows and hunt. Uh ordering the toy online and then going into Walmart or Target and demanding your toy isn't hunting. That's just, mm -hmm. you know, that's just basically like, uh, you know, birds in a little basket and you're shooting them through the basket. That's not hunting. Yeah. Hunting means going out to swap meets, going to toy shows, then going to stores and trying to find what you want making mm -hmm. deals with collectors online, talking to guys that enjoy stuff and, and making a, a, a friendship. And then like, oh man, yeah, I need that arrow for green arrow because my dude doesn't have one. Oh, I have an extra one, bro. I'll hook you up. Yeah, That stuff happens by community effort, not by, well, I checked Pop Finder and they don't have toys, effing scalpers. No, get out there and do more. Right. And go beyond modern toys too there's yeah. a lot of vintage and classic toys absolutely that are yeah. phenomenal and great to hunt down and great to find something special for you you know we're macross collectors so we're always screwed because there's toys that we can <laughs> never get you know i know this uh, is this is my new grail uh, did you are you collecting any of the bandai dx stuff i you know? i have one waiting for me in japan look at this this is the Bandai's made a 148 scale um, VF1 with fast pack. So this toy for folks that aren't familiar with it, they're looking at it uh, with these, what they call fast pack super packs. This is a $500 toy. The same cost as an arcade one up, if you will, but it is immaculate. It's the best Macross toy ever made. In my opinion, it's, it's that beautiful. So um, if you don't have one in your hand, Scott, you got to get one. This is super I, I, awesome. I, I, I literally would have got it this year, but uh, I didn't go to Japan. So, <laughs> Oh, so I mean, because you used to go to Japan shows, right? Like you used to go twice a year, once a year? I go once a year. I try to hit the Wonderfest in winter, which is yeah. our early February, January. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to be in Japan when it's hot. I don't mm. like the heat. Or yeah. I, can heal, I can deal with the heat. It's humidity that uh is a weakness for a desert boy like i am so do you travel all over the country for shows too um i will definitely drive to shows i will fly out to shows it just kind of depends on what the event is mm -hmm. and if i'm just i really want to go to that event i'm gonna go yeah yeah so cool did you so tell me about uh what what's your thoughts on like the HasLab motto of this guy so for folks that haven't seen it there it is there she is my war for cybertron ginormous unicron that scott is jealous looking at i can tell it in your I, eyes right i now. am because like like i was saying <laughs> earlier i don't have mine i ordered two and um since i ordered two they're like being slow on giving me one um i gotta wait so they ship out the singles right now because that's easier to do than doubles the logistic um, wise yeah and that is it is such a fantastic piece it really really is this is we've kind of actually hit there was a certain point i thought you know they're never going to make anything better than the uss flag you know mm -hmm. the age of giant toys is done we'll never get them again and i've been a liar saying that now because <laughs> every time right <laughs> these HasLab projects and these other like super seven projects mm -hmm. really show that the adult community will pay for a large thing Mm -hmm. We will pay to have a giant toy made for us. 
Right. That is made because you and I put our money where our mouth is and said, yes, we will take a giant toy that Walmart and Target would never Literally. carry. <laughs> never. They, they never carry a $500 toy. Why? Yeah. And even if they did, they would carry one of it. Oh, yeah, we got our shipment and it's gone. Yeah, you know, this is where we can and order it's... and get what we want. Um, I have the Castle Grayskull from the Maddie Collector. I've got the Snake mm -hmm. Mountain from uh, Super 7. Mm -hmm. I'm putting my money towards that Thunder Tank from Super 7. I got the Razor Crest. I got the Sentinel. You know, I put my money into these giant projects. One, because I love ginormous robots or vehicles, whatever that might be. And two, because I want to support these projects so we can get more stuff made like this. Yeah. This have you backed all the HasLab projects? We're, we, we're going to have. Yeah. And it won't come back again. At a certain point, I don't think people, like maybe they will start stop hitting these targets and we won't get them. But yeah. the fact that they made a Unicron of that size, of that scale, of that detail is amazing. And I was supporting it from day one. And I'm still here waiting for my copy to show up. <laughs> Are you gonna? So when you buy two, are you just are you gonna have one in both modes? Are you gonna keep one for a rainy day? Is that when you, I, do, you always, do you usually get I'm multiples of stuff? Collector. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't understand what horde collectors are, mm -hmm. horde collectors means I have to have multiples of any toy that I buy. Mm -hmm. So I want one on display. I have a big robot toy display. I need mm -hmm. to have one on display. That means I need to have one in package. <laughs> and on some cases it means i need to have one on display and 20 in package you know like i every time i go out to a toy show and i see certain toys that i buy and i collect i'll buy it every time i see it mm -hmm. you know i'll have in some transformers top spin and twin twists mm -hmm. the jump starters Just... you like pull them back and then they flip up on their feet i have maybe 250 of them <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because whenever I see one, I when buy When will it ever end? <laughs> yeah, I just I just buy it every time. Yeah. I have an entire shelf of them and now they're like extras are going in boxes. Um Macross Valkyries. I'm a big 155 chunky monkey. The chunky monkey collector. fans. Yeah. So I have them all boxed. And then mm. since I have those boxed, I have them loose. Since I have them loose, I also have squadrons. Like you can't stop getting certain toys. Yeah, that makes sense. So even with Unicron there, I do have two of the older Unicrons, one in planet mode, one in robot mode. Mm -hmm. I've got a Cybertron, which also came out as a planet. And I'm hanging up Cybertron and Unicron. And then he, I just don't know where I'm going to put them yet, but I'm going to put them somewhere it's in the centerpiece. Robot room. Uh, it's a centerpiece, absolutely. I, 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 it's probably going to sit on this box here for a while. I, just, I just brought out some of my other. So this is the 2010 repaint of Armada Unicron, which, which I thought great. was fantastic when it came yeah. out. Like the way they did it, like it looks fantastic, and I thought it was huge. And you can see how tall it is compared to the big beast there. Um, I know somebody in chat was mentioning. I think it was uh, a Tran fanatic. Um, uh, was saying that they had the original Armada one, which is this purple one here. So the the purple, it's a little maybe, off. Yeah, that's the first one that came out. So I mean, the Unicron toys that came out in the last couple of of, of years, they were decent, but nothing to the scale. And I know there's like, do you have do you have thoughts about third party Transformers and toys and things? You know, like, if, if are you, you like it, the third party it. stuff? If yeah. you like it, buy it. Why would you not buy it? Some people are like, oh, I'll never buy that third party this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, if it looks great, get it. You know, yeah. um, I'm totally for whatever you can find that you like, buy it. If you that's yeah. something you think is cool, grab it. I've yep. got a couple of uh, Transformers here in the office where they were mm -hmm. third parties. And I thought they've just done such a good job on that third party. I'm going to buy. I'm spending my money to buy. It. I want yeah. that Megatron from the IDW comic mm -hmm. in toy form. I want that yeah. ro purple Rodimus hot rod figure from idw i want the idw comic line in a robot form and i'll spend that money yeah no it's cool are you completist at all too like when you collect stuff or some things i am and some things i can't be yeah i would love to be um and sometimes i just know when to cry uncle and go like that's just not possible man 
you just got to do what you can do to get certain things. But then I have a superpowers toy collection over here where I've got every guy. Yeah. That was very hard to do. Really mm-hmm. hard to do. I've got every guy for that. So I, you know, Secret Wars, I've got every guy. Even the hard ones. Uh so but sometimes to that point it can be very very difficult. GI Joe, I don't have every dude. I yeah. I would like to have every dude, but there's you just have to say there's just no way I'm going to get that, you know, Argentinian red Satan figure on card. It's like $15,000. They just make do it. cool stuff, like a black version of Unicron, which like makes no sense. But I'm like, it's a cool ass repaint. I'm going to buy why it. Why not? It's a why beautiful not? <laughs> Unicron. I, you should never yeah. dislike Unicron for the color of his shell. Every Unicron is beautiful. It is. And so, again, I, I have all three versions of the Armada that came out, the original purplish one. You got the green one? There was a green one? Oh, crap. I don't have a one. <laughs> no. Don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, there's a green one, too. What? Yeah. All right. All right. So now All you're right. going to make me feel bad. It's okay. I thought <laughs> I was like, good. I thought I had this and maybe the Studio Cell one, which somebody was telling me about. That's the third-party Unicron that came out recently, too. I'm, it looks I'm decent, all for but, buying yeah. that one just because I love the Unicrons, and I it mm-hmm. is more of an... Uh, a cartoon accurate yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this one is their War for Cybertron toy masterpiece mm-hmm. one. Yeah. And I definitely. like the look of both. I like yeah. the cartoon look, and I love this high, more highly detailed one. Mm-hmm. And some people are like, "Oh, I don't like it with the kibble." You know, that's where you have all the shell yeah. bits on yep, them. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? The it's... kibble's fine for me because it, yeah. it, it it looks good. It looks like it gives him added mass. It would look plain without it if you planet. didn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. It, he yeah. is a planet of pieces and and, and, and levels and levels and levels. Yeah. So somebody, I like that part of of it. was asking transport. how much it weighs. And so the box itself, when it was shipped, was about 15 pounds, I think 15 and a half pounds. And uh-huh. like it's like a medicine ball when you hold it. It's it's definitely heavy. Uh, in terms of how long it takes to transform, there's 94 steps in the manual. I've not done it yet but i saw a preview on haslab seeing somebody do it for like over half an hour to an hour so it's probably going to take a while to get to it uh, I'm, and gonna, that's- I'm gonna do a video uh mm-hmm. i already talked to my buddy mike like to do a transformation and we're gonna get together and just do that transformation and we think it might take an hour yeah yeah absolutely it's gonna take once he goes into robot mode i don't think i'll ever put him back in planet that's- mode yeah, it's true. But I mean, it's pretty cool in this mode too. Look, this is a really cool feature that I didn't see. Watch this. Ready? You yeah. turn this thing. Am I turning? The ring? It? Yeah, the ring. Look, this is the only kind of like active feature when you twist it and then the this is turning. That's, That's great. so cool, guys. Look at that. And it's like on little gears. That's so cool. But um, it can just chomp, chomp down, chomp down planets like nothing. It's so gorgeous. That's awesome. Probably will will admire it this way, but I definitely am probably gonna put it in robot mode. Even this mode is it just takes up a lot of space with the rings, but it's just it's massive. It's great. It's it's a it. beautiful beautiful robot. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> uh, Thank you. It literally is, it is a baby. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I can't wait to see other people's content on it too. It's really great, really awesome. It's been it's, it's, it's been, not something that you're like. Oh man, that guy's got one. No, you're just like, dude, you got one too. High five, man. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fantastic. Uh, do you have a holy grail like toy? I'm maybe kind of last couple questions. You know, um, I've certainly gotten a lot of my holy grail toys over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of an issue. Like at a certain point as a collector, yeah. what has escaped you? You know, like what are the couple toys that you're just like, dude, I can't get that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an Auto Man action figure from the series Auto Man, so mm-hmm. that goes in with my Tron stuff. Uh, certainly, prototypes can be very difficult to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. Um, for Macross, I don't have the the V uh, the armored Valkyrie in the deluxe gift sot box. Mm, okay i've got the separate box and the separate thing and i got several armors but i don't have the gift set box i've got two uh ostriches and two uh elint seekers so i'm very Mm -hmm. happy with that um superpowers i don't have them all carded 
you know, that's kind of a, a, a run there to get figures carded. I would love a cyborg carded, but the prices are just, it used to be like 1500 and now they're like five and $7,000. Like prices on a lot of collectible toys have just skyrocketed so high mm-hmm. that you have to kind of give up. You're like, I'm just never going to get that. that. That's nice. I'm not going to get that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Cool. Someone's talking about Japanese Diaclone and like, Dude, some of those diaclones are just ridiculous. You can't get mm-hmm. them. If, if someone offered you one, you wouldn't say no. But to get a Grail diaclone figure that you want, some of them are just out of range. Really They're just really get. out of range. Um, yeah. Jumbo Machinders. I've got a Tetsujin, um, but I don't have a Tetsujin in box. Or I don't have you know, a Garuda K7. There's like four of them in the world. I'll never get that. But if one came up, I, you know, and I could get it, I, I wouldn't say no. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. It's cool, cool to hear that you still have some things that, that you're still pining for after all these years. With that's your one of the great things, things about mm-hmm. getting out there and hunting for toys is you yeah. never know what you're going to find. And you just <laughs> might stumble across that amazing toy that day. And you're like, <gasps> you know, that happened to me. My very first ostrich for Macross. A guy had it at his show for twenty dollars, just complete on a table for twenty bucks, and I'm like, I don't even have twenty bucks. I had to go borrow <laughs> twenty dollars just to go get it. give it to him yeah. to get that thing, and I'm like, oh, thank you, Ricky, for that for buying me my Valkyrie. He's like, oh, that was my twenty bucks, man. I keep <laughs> that Valkyrie with the twenty dollar price tag on it, just as you know, as a, your score. a triumph, a victory yeah. trophy yeah. for that toy. It's great. That's awesome. I've always wanted to ask you. Had a couple of comments in here that people are digging your mustache, like Scott. That's that's uh, <laughs> you never always had that, but that's become part of your signature look. Is that something that you just uh, you know um, came across one day and that you you rock that handlebar more than anybody <laughs> I, I know? So <laughs> it was it was a conscious effort. Uh, I did a pilot for a TV show about toys, and I had a small must like I have a really small. Uh, you know, it was like not even this much. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't seem to do it right because I'm mirrored. <laughs> but I had a tiny little yeah. handlebar. Yeah. And that was kind of my look for this pilot. And since we were shopping the pilot around, I had to keep it for like a year and a half. And by that year and a half, it became the trademark look at Scott with the handlebar mustache. So I kept it along ever since then. It is one of my, hey, there's. You know that guy with the mustache, and people know they're talking about me. <laughs> way to way to build your brand, Scott. So that's it, awesome. <laughs> it definitely helped quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I I grew up in a house that was related to Rolly Fingers, mm-hmm. and he was a pitcher for baseball, and he had this giant handlebar mm-hmm. mustache. Yeah, so you always and had I never in the back thought I would grow up to be that guy in the toy world, but it happened. You know, it happened. Well, that's cool. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, toy-wizards.com is where Scott posts all his stuff. He's also active. Uh, you have a Facebook group as well. Uh, where do where do people where do you go, do most of your content now? Is it YouTube? You used to do live streams on Facebook. Yeah, you know we were doing a lot of Facebook live streams, and now we've kind of re- moved over to fully recorded content on YouTube mm-hmm. for Toy Dash Wizards, Toy Wizards. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and Lauren Stone do almost daily videos on Toy Wizards for YouTube. You can also find them on our Facebook page, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm also on Instagram as just Scott Zillner. You can catch some of my cool stuff on there too. Yeah, it's been really awesome kind of getting to know you a little bit deeper. I know we'll probably be talking more once Macross World Convention, Super Dimension Convention comes around, hopefully back in the fall. Do you have an outlook? This will be my final question about kind of the state of conventions with everything coming I, back. I like mean, I, we're already seeing some conventions creeping back. More mm-hmm. and more people are getting vaccinated every week. Yeah. Um, I think by the end of the year, we're going to have probably some social distance conventions. Yeah. And then by next year, middle of next year, we might be back to things as business, you know, taking cool. care of business at that point. Well, I look forward to that day that we can actually see each other at a booth, see what what goodies. I remember Scott has a wonderful display. If you ever see him at one of his conventions, his uh, it's Robo Toy Fest is one of his. I think is that 
Is that what you call your your booth when you go to conventions? No, I have, I, I have a, a, a online toy store called Planet X Toys. Planet X Toys. So Got at it. conventions, it's, you know, or at when I'm doing a convention, it's Planet X Toys. I run a robot convention called Robo Toy Fest. That's right. And we are going to be doing that show in August this year in Pasadena. Cool. Whether or not it's a uh, a safety convention where where everything's ten feet apart or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But we will be doing a uh, a Robo Toy Fest at the end of the year. That's planned. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right, we'll look forward to that, man. Well, anything else you want to plug, mention for the the few viewers that are checking out? And you, thank you, you guys know, for joining. I do chat. a lot of conventions. Uh, mm -hmm. You definitely just have to kind of look them up, or you know, look me up and then see all the different stuff that I do. Uh, conventions I have planned for this year. We're really hoping for ToonCon and mm -hmm. Robo Toy Fest in the fall. And then next year, we're going to be back on schedule with uh, a really nice uh, Pasadena Comic Con in January of 2022 and Sweet. a Power Morphicon in 2022, which will be great. This year, we're going to do an online version of Power Morphicon in June. And oh, then cool. next year, we're going to catch back up and have a real big show uh, in August for 2022. Yeah, at some point in my, my previous guest that I was trying to get you on, Cool Toy is a huge Power Rangers fan and knew of you, and he he often goes to conventions. So, um, yeah, I think he's a really good Green Ranger cosplayer. So he does he does a mighty mean one. But uh, I'm sure nice. you met your fair share of folks part of that world as well. <laughs> but it's been a pleasure talking to you, Scott. Cool. Thank you guys all for joining. Next week, just to give you guys a preview of what I have going on, I just got – I don't know if you've ever seen – well, this is a um, an Aliens – uh, an analog rail gun that you can buy from AliExpress. And so guys, if you guys have seen some content creators out there making gun cabs using a rail gun, I'm gonna bring on some guests that actually made an aliens extermination cab, pedestal cab with these guns. So that's some future content that I got for you guys going on. Um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed the channel. If you guys uh, enjoy the content, figure out, please like the video, do all that good stuff. Scott, thanks so much for joining. Appreciate you. No problem, Talk man. You guys Thanks later. for having me on all board. Right. See you guys next time. Bye.